Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. I hope you're ready because we will start right now. Bonjour à tous, hi everyone and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 7, leçon A. And in this lesson we'll work together on the adverbs, les adverbes. And to be more precise, we'll see three cases. The first one will be with an adjective, an adverb. Second situation will be with un verbe, and then the last one will be with une phrase. Okay, so let's see that right now. The first case we'll discover or we'll work on will be with an adjective or an adverb. Okay, so let's see. The idea would is normally that the adverb should be placed, adverb placé, devant, before the adjective or the other adverb okay so if you've got a structure with one adverb and one adjective your adverb should be placed before the adjective if you get two adverbs then this one should be before the second one okay so let's see how it goes uh first example ce thé est trop chaud okay ce thé tasty of course and then here we've got the demonstrative this tea is too hot okay so you've got the adjective show here and then this trop should be before the adjective okay so it's quite easy uh, another possibility here you've got two adverbs so this one trop too and then rapidement well fast okay and then parler is to talk il parle trop rapidement okay so obviously this trop uh, too fast uh, should be before rapidement. Okay? And then, last example, ce film est assez intéressant. Ce film est assez, assez enough, intéressant, interesting. Okay? So, assez comes before intéressant. Alright? So, remember, if you've got one adverb, then you should put it before the adjective or the second adverb. All right, so let's see now how you will construct it if you have a verb. So the rule goes like that. L'adverbe est placé, is placed, so the adverb is placed en général, in general, so that's quite important in French because of course we've got exceptions all the time. We will have exceptions in French, but en général, okay? Après, so after the verb, okay? Adverbe placé en général après le verbe. So let's see how it goes now. Je lis, lire, lire is to read. Okay, so it's the present form. Je lis, I read. Rapidement. Okay, so fast. Je lis rapidement. So you can see that this rapidement, fast, comes after your verb here, lire. Okay? Second example now. Elle parle, parle is to talk, doucement. Okay, quietly. Elle parle doucement same thing here your adverb is coming after your verb all right and then the last one il conduit conduire is to drive il conduit très bien very well sa nouvelle voiture his new car il conduit très bien sa nouvelle voiture so as you can see here as well this très bien very well is coming after the verb conduire to drive all right so remember the adverb is placed in general after the verb okay and then be careful of course if you construct it at the passé composé tense so remember we saw that previously you should check the unit five if you want to know how to construct this passé composé but then for the passé composé we will have of course some exceptions the exceptions are assez, enough, beaucoup, a lot, bien, well, déjà, already, mal, bad, mieux, better, trop, too, too much, too, okay. Toujours, always. 
and then presque, almost. Okay, so assez, beaucoup, bien, déjà, mal, mieux, trop, toujours, presque. So try to remember them and then in the next page I will show you how they change. So if you take this trop, remember it was too much. So je parle trop. I talk too much. So if we get that the present form as we do here, basically it does respect the rule as we saw previously. So it comes after the verb. Okay, je parle trop. But then, if you put the same sentence at the passé composé form, okay? So remember, passé composé, you get avoir or être, and then after that you get this participe passé form, all right? So you will have to put this adverb, trop, between the two here. J'ai trop parlé. All right? Let's see now another example. Il se repose. Se reposer to re is to rest. Okay? Il se repose beaucoup, a lot. And then, if you put the same sentence at the passé composé form, il s'est beaucoup reposé. Alright? Il s'est beaucoup reposé. So remember, present here, present form, you get this adverb, it's coming after the verb, but then here, It must be here, so between the two. Okay? Another example. Je dors mal. So dormir, it's to sleep. Okay? Mal, bad. Passé composé form. J'ai mal dormi. So same thing. Doesn't come after, but it's right here. Okay? Elle sourit toujours. Sourire, to smile. Toujours, always. Present form, elle sourit toujours. And then, passé composé form, elle a toujours souri. All right. And now, let's see if you want to make a sentence. Because you will have to remember that in some cases, well, the place of the adverb can change. Et variable. Okay? So let's see. You've, you've got an example here. Malheureusement, so malheureusement means unfortunately. Malheureusement, elle a perdu ses clés. Perdre, it's to lose. Okay. Ses clés, her keys. Okay, and it's the passé composé form. Malheureusement, elle a perdu ses clés. Okay, so that's one option. So you can start here, as you can see. You start with the adverb, and then you continue your sentence. All right, but then it would be possible as well to change the order and to start like elle a perdu ses clés, malheureusement. Okay, so you can see that it's possible to start with the adverb or then you can end with it as well. So it's possible to move the adverb in this case. It doesn't need to be at the right beginning of the sentence. Okay, we'll see another example. Récemment, Récemment means recently. Il a décidé, okay, décidé to decide, de changer, to change, de travail. Travail is work. Okay? Récemment, il a décidé de changer de travail. Okay? And it will be the same here. If you look carefully, you can start with il a décidé de changer de travail. So the same portion that we had here, you can start with it. And then you put récemment at the end. Okay, so in some structures, well, keep in mind that it's possible whether to start with the adverb or that to end with the adverb if you want, okay? Uh, well, it's for, <laughs> for once, it's quite easy in French, all right? Okay, so I hope it was clear. So, this was the l first lesson of Unit 7, uh, Unité 7. If you want more lessons, well, you can find them here and then the website is waiting for you, imagier.net. Have a great day. Bye. In this lesson, we'll try to focus on what we call les adverbes de manière, and especially the way to construct them, okay? So, the rule goes like, if you've got, or if you want to construct uh, an adverb de manière, first, you've got to know, well, the adjective at the masculine form. Then, 
you will make it or modify it and put it at the feminine form and after that you will add m a n t and when you add this m a n t at the end of your feminine form of the adjective then you will get the adverb okay so it sounds quite easy it is not that difficult okay but then we'll have a look so we'll take a first example easy one and this is parfait okay parfait means perfect in english okay it's not that far so we've got here this adjective and it's at the masculine form if we put the same adjective at the feminine form well the rule normally we, we saw that previously goes like you put this final uh, you add this final uh at the end of your adjective to get the feminine form of course we've got some exceptions but then that's the normal rule okay and so based on this form as we saw you just add m a n t and then you get your adverb parfaitement okay in english it would be perfectly okay so parfait then parfait parfaitement all right, so we'll see a few examples, and then the first one is franc. Okay, so in some cases, they will be a bit strange because the feminine will not follow the rule that we saw, but then, I mean, I, I told you that in advance, you know, most of them uh, follow this rule, but then, of course, we've got exceptions. Okay, but then, so franc, franche, so it's the feminine form, the yeah, adjective, and then franchement, you get the adverb here. Okay, so for each adjective, I will put the English translation here at the beginning, all right? Du, you don't pronounce the final X. Douce, feminine form. Doucement, adverb. Parfait, parfait, parfaitement. Certain, certaine, certainement. Joyeux, joyeuse, joyeusement. All right, so let's repeat them one more time. Franc, franche, franchement. Doux, douce, doucement. Parfait, parfaite, parfaitement. Certain, certaine, certainement. Joyeux, joyeuse, joyeusement. Okay, let's continue the list. Heureux. Heureuse, heureusement. Spécial, spécial, spécialement. Clair, clair, clairement. Vif, vive, vivement. Sportif, sportive, sportivement. Ok, you can read them one more time. Heureux. Heureuse, heureusement. Spécial, spécial, spécialement. Clair, clair, clairement. Vif, vive, vivement. Sportif, sportive, sportivement. Okay? And then, we can see some subgroups. Okay? So, it does mean that here you will have the ending of your adjective at the masculine form. Then here, the ending of... The adjective at the feminine form and here you've got the ending of your adverb so it takes back this ending here uh, accent grave r e and then you add this m e n t okay so this subgroup follow the rule that if it ends with a r then the feminine form will be a accent grave it goes like that r e okay so let's see a few examples now entier entière Entièrement. Premier, première, premièrement. Dernier, dernière, dernièrement. Léger, légère, légèrement. Ok? One more time. Entier, entière, entièrement. Premier, première, premièrement. Dernier, dernière, dernièrement. Léger, légère, légèrement. Okay? And then, uh, second, uh, second, sorry, subgroup. Uh, so if it ends with E, T, then it will go like E, accent grave, T, E. And then for the 
adverb, E accent grave, T-E, and you add this M-E-N-T here. Okay? Let's see. Secret, secrète, secrètement. Because I tend to insist a little bit on it just to make you hear the difference between the masculine. Secret, secrète. Okay? So you're pronouncing the T. Okay? Complet, complète, complètement. Discret, discrète, discrètement. Okay, so one more time. Secret, secrète, secrètement. Complet, complète, complètement. Discret, discrète, discrètement. Okay, so let's see another subgroup. So actually you get two things here. The first one, so if your adjective is ending with ENT, then it will be transformed for the adverb, like E, M, M, E, N, T. And if it ends with A, N, T, it will be transformed like A, M, M, E, N, T. Okay? But then, I did put them in the same group because phonetically, and that's the important thing, phonetically, you will pronounce them the same way. So you will pronounce AMAN, and here it will be the same, you will pronounce AMAN. Okay? So let's see how it goes. PATIENT. And then, patiemment. So, as I told you, even if you write it E-M-M-E-N-T, phonetically it goes like amant, patiemment. All right? Récent, same rule. Récemment, récemment, récemment. Okay? Then, suffisant, suffisamment. And the last example. Élégant, élégamment. Alright, so let's repeat them one more time. Patient, patiemment, récent, récemment, suffisant, suffisamment, élégant, élégamment. Okay, and another subgroup. So if your adjective is ending with EL, then feminine form of the adjective will be E, double L, E, and then the adverb E, double L, E, M, E, N, T. Okay? Réel, réellement. Okay, so remember when you get this E uh, here and then it's followed by two consonants and then they are the same consonant like here. Uh, the sound of the E uh, changes and it's open. It's E. Uh. So that's the reason why you get this réel. Okay? Réellement. Alright? Then manuel, manuel, manuellement. Annuel, annuel, annuellement. Naturel, naturel, naturellement. Ok, one more time. Réel, réel, réellement. Manuel, manuel, manuellement. Annuel, annuel, annuellement. Naturel, naturel, naturel. Uh, the topic will be dans la ville, so in the town. Dans la ville. Okay, so let's start now. Une rue. Okay, remember final E uh, not pronounced. Une rue. Une voie ferrée. Final E uh, here not pronounced and then this one is not pronounced either. Une voie ferrée. Une autoroute. Une autoroute. Un boulevard. Final day, not pronounced. Un boulevard. Un lampadaire. Final E, uh, not pronounced. Un lampadaire. Une aire de stationnement. Une aire de stationnement. Un musée. Final E, uh, not pronounced. Un musée. Un immeuble. So you can see I'm making this little liaison between the two. Un immeuble. Final E, uh, not pronounced. Un immeuble. Un stade. Same thing here. Final E uh, is not pronounced. Un stade. Un gratte-ciel. Un gratte-ciel. Un restaurant. Final T, not pronounced. Un restaurant. Un hôtel.
hotel. So you can see that I'm making this little liaison, this little link between the two. Un hotel. Un no, un no, un hotel. Alright. Un terre-plein. Un terre-plein. Remember this E-I-N nasal. So it goes in your nose and it's un plein, plein, un terre-plein. Une gare. Okay, remember when you get this G and A together, the sound is G, 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 G. Une gare. Final E not pronounced. Une gare. Une tour. Okay, O, U, U, U. Une tour. Un palais des congrès. Final S here and here are not pronounced. Un palais des congrès. Un parc. Un parc. Un espace vert. First thing, you've got this little link between the two. Un espace vert. Final E not pronounced and then final T not pronounced. Un espace vert. Un trottoir. Un trottoir. Une borne d'incendie. Okay, final E here not pronounced. Final E here not pronounced. Une borne d'incendie. And then you get the nasal. Un. En. Incendie. Une borne d'incendie. Un égout. Okay, little link between the two. Un égout. Final T, not pronounced. Un égout. Une conduite d'eau potable. Une conduite d'eau potable. Final E uh, here and here are not pronounced. And then when you combine these two, oh, so, sorry, these three vowels, E, A, U, you get the sound O. Only O, okay? Une conduite d'eau potable. Potable. Ok? Une conduite de gaz. Final E, not pronounced here. Une conduite de gaz. Un câble électrique. Final E here and here are not pronounced. Un câble électrique. Un abribus. Un abribus. Un arrêt d'autobus. So you can hear this little link between the two. Un arrêt d'autobus. Un passage pour piéton. Un passage pour piéton. Final S here, not pronounced, and then final E, not pronounced. Un passage pour piéton. Des feux de circulation. So here, final X, not pronounced. Des feux de circulation. Une chaussée. Okay, here, final E not pronounced. And then you get the double S between two vowels, so it's really strong. I mean, the S is s -s -s. Okay, so une chaussée. Un réverbère. Final E not pronounced. Un ré. So here you get this accent aigu. Et... And then here you get this accent grave, E, okay? E, E. So it goes like, Ré, Ver, Ber. Okay? Un réverbère. Une maison individuelle. So remember, when you get this E and then double consonant, and especially here, it's the same one. Uh, that's the, the idea. It will open the sound of E. So you will pronounce it like E, okay? Individuel. Uel, okay? Une maison individuelle. Une maison individuelle jumelée. Final E here, not pronounced. Une maison individuelle jumelée. Des appartements en copropriété. Remember final E. S and final T are not pronounced here. Des appartements, little liaison here. Des appartements en copropriété. 
Des maisons en rangée. Final E and final S are not pronounced. Des maisons en rangée. Une tour d'habitation. Remember, H, H, doesn't exist in French. Well, in most of the cases. So, it does mean that you don't pronounce it. Alright, so, d'habitation. Une tour d'habitation. Dans la maison. So, let's start now. Une entrée principale. Un vestibule. Un vestiaire. Un couloir, un escalier, une buanderie. Ok, so one more time. Une entrée principale, un vestibule, un vestiaire, un couloir, un escalier, une buanderie. Un salon, une cheminée, une salle à manger, une cuisine, des WC, une salle de séjour. So one more time. Un salon, une cheminée. Une salle à manger, une cuisine, des WC, une salle de séjour. Un rez-de-chaussée. Un étage. Un palier. Une chambre principale. Une garde-robe. Une chambre. One more time. Un rez-de-chaussée. Un étage. Un palier. Une chambre principale. Une garde-robe. Une chambre. Une fenêtre. Une porte-fenêtre. Une salle de bain. Une douche. Une baignoire. Une porte pliante. So one more time. Une fenêtre. Une porte-fenêtre. Une salle de bain. Une douche. Une baignoire. Une porte pliante. Une table. Une desserte. Un fauteuil. Un canapé. Un banc. Un tabouret. One more time. Une table. Une desserte. Un fauteuil. Un canapé, un banc, un tabouret, une chaise, un lit, une armoire, un coffre, une commode, un rideau. Ok Une chaise, un lit, une armoire, un coffre, une commode, un rideau. We'll have the pleasure to discover together two verbs. So it's quite interesting because we've got first the verb savoir and then we've got the verb connaître. And if you want to translate that, I mean directly in English, well basically they mean the same thing and it would be translated with to know okay so two verbs for the same meaning what does it mean it means that you will have 
two different uses of these verbs. The first one, savoir, well, the rule is that you will use savoir plus a verb. So after that, if you want to add a verb, then you will have to use savoir. Or then if you want to put, as we say, structure verbale, so it's just somehow like a sentence, okay? So if you want to introduce a sentence after savoir, then uh, after to know, then that's savoir that you will have to use, okay? But connaître, so same meaning, as I said, it's to know, okay? You will use connaître only if you want to put a name or a noun after connaître, okay? So that's the main difference of use between savoir and connaître. Okay, so connaître plus a noun avec un nom and then savoir with a verb or then structure or verbal structure or let's say sentence if you want. Okay, so first, of course, we should remember how to conjugate savoir at the present form here. Okay, je sais, tu sais, il sait, elle sait. Nous savons, vous savez, ils savent, elles savent. Okay, so if you look carefully here, you write it S-A-I-S, -S, well, the same way here. Here you write it S-A-I-T, okay, but then phonetically, these three forms are the same, and it's C, okay? Je sais, tu sais, il sait, elle sait. All right, so let's see now the passé composé form. J'ai su, tu as su, il a su, elle a su, nous avons su, vous avez su, ils ont su. Okay, so if you remember, when we introduced this uh, passé composé form, it was in unit 5, if my memory is correct, uh, then you put first, in most of the cases, the verb avoir at the present form, and then you put this participe passé form, and the participe passé form for savoir is su, okay, so it doesn't change, that's the reason why you will put it right here after each form, okay, so j'ai su, tu as su, il a su, elle a su, nous avons su, little liaison here, Vous avez su, same thing here, ils ont su, little liaison between the two, elles ont su, okay? And now, let's see, connaître at the present form. Je connais, tu connais, il connaît, elle connaît, nous connaissons, vous connaissez, ils connaissent, elles connaissent. All right, same thing as we had for uh, savoir, if you look carefully, here, connaît, A-I-S, connaît, A-I-S, and then connaît, A-I-T, so don't forget this circumflex, even if you don't pronounce it well, you should write it. Um, well, you pronounce these three forms the same way, okay? Connaît, connaît, and then connaît, all right? Let's see how it goes for the passé composé form. J'ai connu. Tu as connu, il a connu, elle a connu, sorry, nous avons connu, vous avez connu, ils ont connu, elles ont connu. Okay, so same rule, first, avoir at the present form, then participe passé form of connaître, it's connu, alright, so it will go everywhere for each person here, okay, j'ai connu, tu as connu, il a connu, elle a connu, Nous avons connu, vous avez connu, ils ont connu, elles ont connu. Okay? And now for the future form, uh, as it was introduced, introduced in the previous lesson, unit uh, 6. So, savoir the future form, and it goes like, je saurai, tu sauras, il sera, elle sera, nous saurons, vous saurez, ils sauront, elles sauront. And then for connaître at the future form. Je connaîtrai, tu connaîtras, il connaîtra, elle connaîtra, nous connaîtrons, vous connaîtrez, ils connaîtront, elles connaîtront. All right? So, let's see a few examples now. So the first one, remember, savoir, so you construct it with a verb or 
a sentence, okay? In that case, I just put a verb. Je sais chanter. Okay, so remember, savoir to know, chanter to sing. Je sais chanter. All right, so second verb here, chanter. Well, the rule in French is that if you've got a structure like that with two verbs, the second verb should be all the time at the infinitive. Okay, je sais chanter like that. All right, if you put the same sentence at the passé composé as we, we saw previously, the, the passé composé form of savoir, it goes like j'ai su chanter. All right, and then the future form, je saurais chanter. Okay, so it's quite easy. Hein? Je sais chanter. J'ai su chanter, je saurai chanter. That's it. Let's see, connaître now. Je connais cette personne. Okay, so connaître, to know, okay. <laughs> and then, cette personne, personne is person, and it's uh, feminine, so if you want to put this, this, you should put it at the feminine, so it's this person, cette personne. Je connais cette personne. Passé composé, j'ai connu. Cette personne. And then the future form. Je connaîtrai cette personne. All right? So it's not that difficult. Okay? But, of course, there is one exception. And the exception is savoir plus a noun. Okay? So you will use this structure only if you want to introduce this concept that we call in French, par cœur, so by heart. Let's see one example. Je sais ma leçon. So in that case, savoir to know, ma leçon, my lesson. Okay, so in that sentence, when you use je sais ma leçon, you really want to say that you know your lesson by heart. Okay, that's the reason why we use savoir in that case. Okay, same thing for the second example. Je sais mon texte, my text, or then my lines if you want. Je sais mon texte, okay, so it's the same. You want to introduce this idea that you know your text or your lines by heart. Okay, and that's the only exception when we will use savoir plus a noun. All right, le conditionnel présent. So basically, the conditionnel is, as in English, this conditional form. So would, could, okay? But of course, as in English, we've got different tenses for that. And the first one that we will see, so the more classic tense that we us usually use, sorry, when we talk about the conditionnel, it's the present form. Okay, so let's start now. Le conditionnel présent. So in this lesson, we'll see first la formation, so the way to build it, to make it, and then, of course, l'emploi, so when you should use this conditionnel présent form. Okay, so let's first start, if that's okay with you, with the formation, the way to make it. So you'll see that it's quite easy in a way. And normally that's the reason why we introduce it right after the future tense. So if you didn't see the video regarding the future tense, I definitely advise you to do it because uh, it will be more clear for you. So it's unit six. I don't remember the lesson, but check unit six, unit six, sorry, and then the future and you'll find it. Okay. Because the way we construct this conditionnel présent is the same way that we construct the future, okay? The only difference will be the endings, all right? So, let's take the first example that we've got here. Parler belongs to the first group of verbs. Remember, we've got three in French. And the first group of verb is ending with a air, like here, okay? So, these verbs are regular. So that's a good news, and normally that's the reason why we start with them. Uh, so you don't have to change your verb. So parler is like that. You will keep it like that. And based on this form, after that, you will add the endings. Okay? And for je, the ending will be a, e, s. Okay? So you don't need to modify your infinitive form, the basic form, 
is like that. It goes there. And right after, you just add the ending AIS. And you get Je parlerai. All right? So it's quite simple. Second group, so verbs ending with ER. Be careful, not all the verbs ending with ER, but a quite decent amount of them <laughs> belongs to the second group. But then still, it will be quite easy because it is exactly the same way. You don't modify your infinitive form. You just keep it like that, all right? And after that, you add your ending. Je finirai. So, A, I, S. Je finirai. All right, so it's quite easy. You keep your basic form, your infinitive form, and right after, you just put the ending, okay? For the third group of verbs, so, of course, we will have some exceptions, so we'll see that a bit later in this lesson. But still, the main rule is, if it's ending like lire, lire to read, okay, uh, with this e, uh, well, the idea is that you will take this e uh away, as we quite usually do in French, okay? And after that, you will add your ending. Je lirai. All right? So the rule goes like, if you've got final E, uh, then you take it away. You've got your form here, L-I-R, and then you add your ending, A-I-S, je lirai. Okay? So you've got three forms here, and they're actually the, well, conditional présent, forms, je parlerai, je finirai, je lirai, okay? Parler is to talk or to speak, finir, to finish or to end, lire, to read, okay? So, the endings now. So, we saw that previously that, well, the ending for je will be, whoops, sorry, the ending for je will be a, i, s, okay? The ending for tu will be, well, the same, a, i, S. The ending for il, elle, will be a, i, t. Okay? The good news is that even if we write them differently, like you see here, we pronounce them the same way. And it goes like e, e, e. Alright? So, as usual in French, what you pronounce, well, it's not that difficult in a way. But then, remember how to write them. A-I-S for je, A-I-S for tu, A-I-T for il, elle. So now let's see nu. And nu goes like I-O-N-S, okay? And it should be pronounced ion. Remember, final S is not pronounced. Ion, okay? Then for vous, it goes like I-E-Z. And it goes like i -E, okay? Remember when you get this before it goes like ye ye ye, okay? Ye. So that's the reason why we had this yon here and then ye, all right? And the last one, so even if it looks <laughs> scary because you've got three vowels here and then nt, okay? A, e, a, nt. So as usual, that's the way you should write it. But then phonetically, the good news is that you pronounce it e. So the, the same way that we had here, e. E here, E, and then E. Okay? So let's pronounce them. E, 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 Yon, Ye, E. So if you look carefully, you get only three phonetical pronunciation. The first one is here and here. It's the same. So it's E. After that, we'll get this Yon. And after that, after that we'll get this Ye. All right? So let's see now for parler. Parler is to speak or to talk. Okay, so je parlerai. Tu parlerais. Il parlerait. Elle parlerait. Nous parlerions. Vous parleriez. Il parlerait. Elle parlerait. Second example. Choisir from the second group of verbs. Choisir is to choose. Je choisirais. Tu choisirais, il choisirait, elle choisirait, nous choisirions, vous choisiriez, 
Il choisirait, elle choisirait. Ok? Not that difficult. The last example, so for the third group, it's écrire. Écrire is to write, ok? So, same rule, if you remember, the example was with lire, to read, but then it's exactly the same rule, so if you look carefully, it's ending with a, this E, uh, ok? So, you take it away, and after that, you put the ending. J'écrirai, tu écrirais, il écrirait, elle écrirait, nous écririons, vous écririez, ils écriraient, elles écriraient. All right, so it's not that difficult anyway. But of course, we've got some exceptions, as I said in the beginning. So the, the, the idea for these exceptions is that the, the, the word, or sorry, the verb will change. So endings will be the same, so that's one good news. So all the endings that we saw previously, well, they will be the same, but then you get to remember the way the verb will change. So if you saw, that's the reason why I, I spoke about the future uh, lesson. If you saw the future lesson and you remember the way these verbs are changing for the future, the good news is that they will be changing the same way. So être will become sœur. All right? And then after that, you will have to put the endings. Je serai. All right? So you will keep this sœur all the time for your conjugation. And after that, you will add all the endings that we saw. Okay? Avoir will become or. Same thing here. After that, you will add all the endings. So tu aurais. Aller will become Ir. And you'll get il irait, elle irait. Faire will become faire. Nous ferions. Savoir will become sœur. Vous seriez. Voir will become vers. Il verrait. Elle verrait. Ok, so let's see them one more time. So, être, to be, je serai. Avoir, to have, tu aurais. Aller, to go, il irait, elle irait. Faire, to do, nous ferions. Savoir, to know, vous seriez. Voir, to see, il verrait, elle verrait. Alright, so... One more list of exceptions. Pouvoir will become pour. Je pourrais. Vouloir will become voudre. Tu voudrais. Pleuvoir will become pleuvre. Il pleuvrait. Devoir will become d'oeuvre. Nous devrions. Venir will become viendre. Vous viendriez. Courir will become cour. Il courrait, elle courrait. All right, so let's see them one more time. Pouvoir can. Je pourrais. Vouloir to want. Tu voudrais. Pleuvoir to rain. Il pleuvrait. Devoir to have to. Nous devrions venir, to come, vous viendriez, courir, to run, il courrait, elle courrait. Alright, so it was the first thing regarding the conditionnel présent and then as I said regarding the, the, the fact that it's quite close to the future, so the important thing is to remember that The endings for the future are AI, AS, A, ONS, EZ, ONT. Okay? But then for the conditional present, if you remember them, it was AIS, AIS, AIT, IONS, IEZ, AIENT. 
So to be totally honest, if you think about that, because basically we construct these two tenses the same way, okay? So the endings here and here will be the only way to make the difference between the future and the conditional. So it's quite important to really remember them uh, by heart. Okay, so remember, future, A-I, A-S, A, O-N-S, A-Z, O-N-T, but then conditional present, A-I-S, A-I-S, A-I-T, I-O-N-S, I-E-Z, A-I-E-N-T. Okay? And now let's see when we should use this conditional present because that's the most important thing. The first situation would be to express a desire or a wish, exprimer un désir ou un souhait. Okay? J'aimerais être en vacances. Aimer, to like or to love. Okay? And here you get the conditional form. Être, to be, en vacances, on vacation, holidays. J'aimerais être en vacances. The second use will be if you want to donner un conseil, to give an advice. Vous devriez apprendre le français. Okay, devoir, to have to, but then in that case, when you say, vous devriez, you should. Uh, that would be the more correct translation. Vous devriez apprendre, apprendre is to learn, le français, French. And then if you want to ask something politely, that's the tense you should definitely use. And especially if you go in a coffee restaurant or if you go in a shop and you, you want to ask some for something, then use this conditional form. I mean, trust me, it's quite important. Okay? Je voudrais un café, s'il vous plaît. Okay? Je voudrais un café, s'il vous plaît. Okay? So let's read them one more time. J'aimerais être en vacances. Vous devriez apprendre le français. Je voudrais un café, s'il vous plaît. Another use of this conditionnel Present is, is if you want to construct a sentence, like in English, for instance, with this if. Okay? So, if in French is si. And then the rule is quite strict in French. If you start with this if, si, then it should be followed by the imparfait form. We didn't see this form yet. It will come in the next lesson, or in the next unit, sorry. So, no stress about that. It's just an example, but it's just, just for you to know that if you want to construct this IF structure, then it should be followed by imparfait. Then comes le conditionnel. Okay, so let's take one example. Si j'avais le temps, je ferais du sport. Okay, so, si j'avais le temps, so if I had, it's the same in English, huh? you, 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 put, uh, you put this, I had. Si j'avais le temps, so time, je ferais, remember it was faire, to do, but then at the conditional form, du sport. Okay, another example. Si j'étais riche, so riche, rich, était, it's to be, remember. Je voyagerais, voyager is to travel, autour du monde. Around the world. Oops. <laughs> and then the last one. Si elle était là, so être, to be, là, here. Nous irions, so remember it was to go, aller, and it becomes ir, irions, nous promener. Okay, so se promener to have question avec qui et que. So it's quite important, so please take the time to listen to me. <laughs> so let's start now. Les questions avec qui et que. So we'll first start with qui and then after that we'll see que. Alright, so the first thing, qui. And it's starting right now. Qui est-ce qui parle? So it's a question, okay? Qui est-ce qui parle? Second example would be... Qui est-ce que tu regardes? 
Ok, c'est so le first one. Qui est-ce qui parle? And then, qui est-ce que tu regardes? So, in both cases, uh, well, these questions are mostly for uh, oral use because uh, when we add this s qui est que, normally it's when you talk, okay? If you write, you don't really need to put them. Uh, we've got some more formal way to write questions. We saw that previously, okay? But still, it's possible orally to use these structures. So, the question is, Why do we use qui here and qui here and then qui here and que here? Okay, because it can, it can look a bit messy at the beginning, especially if you don't really know how to use or to structure that. So the first thing that we've got to remember, yes, it's here. So the first part here, this qui, well, we will use this qui here just because we want to have the information and it concerns a person. Who, okay? Qui means who when we start it, when we start the question with it, okay? Qui est-ce qui parle? Qui est-ce que tu regardes? And then we've got the second part here, as we saw, and it's quite interesting because we've got two options here, the first one and the second one. So the first one, you will use qui just because you will ask the question regarding the subject of the verb. You get the verb here, parler, okay? And the information that you want to have concerns the subject of this verb. And then here, we will use que just because we want to have the information concerning the object of the verb. So you get regarder here, but then if you look carefully, you already have the subject. It's tu regardes, okay? So, qui Est-ce qui parle? So if you want to translate it directly, you could translate it like who is talking? Okay? Qui est-ce qui parle? Alright, so here you want to have the information regarding the person and then here you want to have the information regarding the subject of the verb. Parler. Okay? And here, qui est-ce que tu regardes? So who are you watching? So first thing here, because you want to have this information, the information regarding a person, qui est que, and here it will be the object of the verb, so you are watching someone, okay? So, let's see a few examples. The first one, qui est-ce qui parle? And then the answer could be, ma femme parle, my wife talks or is talking. Okay, so in that case, you can see that in the answer, the answer that you give, see here, it's ma femme parle. Okay, so it's the subject, ma femme parle. And then the second example we had, it's qui est-ce que tu regardes? Okay. Je regarde mon ami. Okay, mon ami, my friend. Regarder was to, to watch or to look. Okay, je regarde mon ami. And you can see here that it's, well, basically it's quite clear. It's quite clear. So, qui, just because you want the information for a person. And then the second qui, just because it will be the subject. Ma femme parle. Okay. Here, qui, because it's the person. Mon ami, my friend, it's a person. And then que, just because, if you look carefully, it comes after your verb. Because it's not the subject, it's the object. Okay, grammatical object, we're not talking about an object, but a grammatical object, so it can be a person, it could be a dog, animal, or an object if you want. Okay, so, je regarde mon ami. All right? Now, let's see, que. First question, qu'est-ce qui fait ce bruit? Okay, second question, qu'est-ce que tu fais? All right? So, remember that even if you don't have the que here, but you get this qu, u, all right? It does mean that previously we had the e here and here, but then as usual, if you look carefully, we've got here another e starting here. So, we've got to take our e away, okay? So, let's see now. First part, we use this que 
because we want to have to have the information regarding a thing okay so we had key previously and it was for a person and then k it's for a thing so it's not for a person so k will be for a thing when you start your, the the question with it okay and then here so remember we've got this key here and then we've got this k here well it will be exactly the same idea that we had previously so you will use key here just because you want the information regarding the subject of the verb you've got the verb here to do okay and then here you put this k just because you want to have the answer with the object of the verb okay you've got the verb here faire to do same verb but then you've got the subject tu fais you do Okay, so the first question, qu'est-ce qui fait ce bruit? What is doing this noise? Qu'est-ce qui fait ce bruit? Or this sound, if you want. Qu'est-ce que tu fais? What are you doing? Okay, so let's see now the same question. Qu'est-ce qui fait ce bruit? And the answer would be, la voiture de mon père fait ce bruit okay my father's car okay la voiture de mon père so if you translate it directly it's the car of my father and then you've got the verb okay but then this long thing is the subject la voiture de mon père fait ce bruit okay so that's the reason why first we had this que because it's a thing it's not a person okay and then qui here because it's the subject of the verb faire. Okay? Second question. Qu'est-ce que tu fais? So if you remember carefully, it was, what are you doing? Qu'est-ce que tu fais? And the answer. Je prépare un chocolat chaud. Okay? So I wanted to put another verb in the, the, the answer just to, 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 well, show you that is you don't really need to answer with the same, same verb, you know. Qu'est-ce que tu fais? What are you doing? Je prépare. So, I prepare. Je prépare. And then, this is the object of the verb. So, the object, just let me repeat, uh, the gr grammatical object of the verb. So, je prépare un chocolat chaud. All right? So, now, remember that we can, of course, construct these things with preposition okay just because in french we've got uh, verbs and uh, verbs are in some cases uh, constructed with preposition so you will need to remember these things so preposition can be a avec de pour and then chez okay à qui est-ce que tu parles Okay, remember, so, parler, to talk, is constructed with a, to talk to, okay, parler à quelqu'un. So, if you want to know à qui est-ce que tu parles, who are you talking to, okay, à qui est-ce que tu parles. So, it doesn't change, you just need to first start with the preposition, and then you continue your structure, okay. Uh, jouer, jouer, it's to play, okay. And then normally, if you're talking about a sport or activity, so sport or activity, then we tend to use this preposition a with it. Okay, so play, but then a, and then the name of the activity. It could be football, or it could be basketball, or it could be whatever. Okay, à quoi est-ce que tu joues? And then now, I assume that you will tell me, oh, oh have a look at that. What? on earth is going on why do we have this qua and not k okay well because that's the rule and we'll see that but that's the rule in french if you want to construct a question like here with k but then it is constructed with a preposition then k will change and then it will become qua okay that's the reason why Qui doesn't change, que will be transformed into quoi. So that's the reason why here we get à quoi est-ce que tu joues. Okay? Now, avec qui est-ce que tu viens? 
So venir is coming avec with, ok? Avec qui est-ce que tu viens? Avec quoi est-ce que tu écris? Écrire is to write, ok? Same thing, with, ok? And then it's exactly the same rule, remember, I told you that. Que becomes quoi here, that's it. Avec quoi est-ce que tu écris? Ok? So remember, préposition with qui, no problem at all. But then, préposition plus que, no. <laughs> you will have to use quoi, ok? So remember, that's quite important because it, it, it can sound a bit strange if, uh, if you're using this que instead of quoi with the préposition. Les nombres ordinaux. Les nombres ordinaux. Premier, première, ok? So, you've got here the English version, so first, ok? But then, as usually in French, we've got the difference between the masculine form and the feminine form, ok? So, I will write here first, masculine, then feminine, and I will read both, ok? So, premier, première, deuxième, second, seconde. Ok, so it's quite interesting because here you've got deuxième and then it doesn't change. It's uh, the masculine or the feminine form is exactly the same. So that's a good news. And then we've got here another option, second or seconde. Ok, in that case it does mean that nothing is coming after. Ok, so deuxième usually means that you've got after that third, fourth, etc. Okay, but then second, normally, it's the end. Okay, it's the second one. Okay. Troisième. Okay, masculine form, feminine form, the same. Quatrième. Cinquième. Sixième. Okay, one more time. Premier, première. Deuxième. Second, seconde. Troisième. Quatrième, cinquième, sixième, septième, huitième, neuvième, dixième, onzième, douzième. So, so far, I assume that it's not that difficult. You've got to remember that it's M, ok? Septième, huitième, neuvième, Dixième, onzième, douzième, treizième, quatorzième, quinzième, seizième, dix-septième, dix-huitième. Ok? Treizième, quatorzième, quinzième, seizième, dix-septième, dix-huitième. 19e, 20e, 21e, 100e, 1000e, 1001e. Ok? 19e, 20e, 21e, 100e, 1000e, 1001e. In this lesson, we'll only focus on the verb être, ok? So it will be a short one, but still quite important. Je serai. Tu serais. Il serait. Elle serait. Nous serions. Vous seriez. Il serait. Elle serait. Alright, so remember. Conditionnel présent, so if you want to translate directly this je serai, it's I would be, okay? But then in French we've got only one form like that. Remember, so R-E-S, but then you don't pronounce the final S. Je serai. Same rule here, no pronunciation of the final S. Tu serai. Phonetically, it is the same. And then the good news here, it will be exactly the same. So final T is not pronounced. So phonetically, you've got the same form as we had previously. Il serait, 
elle serait. Ok, so one more time. Je serai, tu serais, il serait, elle serait. Alright, so then, final S not pronounced, and then this is this yon, yon, remember, it goes in your nose, it's uh, nasal, yon, nous serions. Ok, then, vous seriez, and last but not least, and remember, it's quite strange, but A, I, E, N, T, many letters, only one simple sound, E, as we had here, here, and here. It's exact, exactly the same sound. Il serait, elle serait. All right. Je serais, tu serais, il serait, elle serait, nous serions, vous seriez, il serait, elle serait. In this lesson, we'll focus on the conditional present form of avoir, to have, okay? So, let's see now how it goes. J'aurais, tu aurais, il aurait, elle aurait, nous aurions, vous auriez, ils auraient, elles auraient. Alright, so to remember carefully this conditional present form. So it was introduced in this unit. So check, uh, check the unit 7 and then put uh, conditional present. You will find the whole description and the, the, the whole lesson of uh, conditional present. But still, here you can see that j'aurais... Well, if you want to translate it directly, it would be I would have, okay? But then in French, we've got only one form here. And then take a good look at the endings. A-I-S, A-I-S, A-I-T, I-O-N-S, I-E-Z, I-U-N-T, okay? The endings for the conditional present form, okay? So let's see how you pronounce them now. J'aurais, so final S, not pronounced. J'aurais. Then same thing here, tu aurais, you don't pronounce the final S. Il aurait, same thing here, final T is not pronounced, elle aurait, okay? So you get the same pronunciation here for the three first forms. J'aurais, tu aurais, il aurait, elle aurait, okay? Then, nous aurions, so this little link between the two, this liaison, nous aurions, final S, not pronounced. Vous auriez, little link between the two, vous auriez, And then, ils auraient, little link, but then, look, A-I-E-N-T, like that, and you only pronounce E, like we had here, it will be exactly the same pronunciation here. Ils auraient, elles auraient. Okay, so let's see that one more time. J'aurais, tu aurais, il aurait, elle aurait, nous aurions, vous auriez, ils auraient, elles auraient. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent and this is Unité 7, Leçon K. And in this lesson we'll discover together uh, the verb aller, so aller means to go, and especially the conditionnel présent form of this verb. Okay, so let's start right now. The first form goes like j'irai, tu irais. Il irait. Elle irait. Nous irions. Vous iriez. Ils iraient. Elles iraient. Okay, so let's check them one more time. The first one, j'irai. Okay, remember, final S not pronounced. J'irai. Tu irais. Same thing here, final S not pronounced. Tu irais. And then, il, masculine form, irait, final T, not pronounced. So what you can see is that these, these form, this form and this form are actually pronounced the same way. Okay? So, il irait, elle irait. Okay, then, nous irions. Okay, so let's make this little liaison between the two. Nous irions, final S, not pronounced. Nous irions. Then, vous iriez. So, same thing here. Make the liaison. Vous iriez. Remember, when you get this EZ at the end, you get the sound E. Okay? Iriez. Iriez. And then, vous iriez. Alright? And the final form. Ils iraient. Okay? So, remember, make the liaison as well. You get this S and then the vowel after. So, ils iraient. And then, if you look carefully, you get A, I, E, N, T. Okay? But then, phonetically, it goes like... 
okay so technically these form and these forms here are pronounced the same way and it goes like irait okay so ils iraient and then the feminine elles iraient all right so j'irai tu irais il irait elle irait nous irions vous iriez ils iraient elles iraient Okay, so that's it for the conditional present form of the verb aller. Aller, remember, it was to go and then uh, you get the YouTube channel here and it's uh, youtube.com slash imagier if you want more videos. And then the website is here and it's waiting for you, imagier.net. Have a great day. Bye, bye. And it's uh, lequel and laquelle. Okay, so first thing, well, let's see what lequel is. Lequel? Well, basically, it's when you want to replace this quel. So, the meaning of quel is what, okay, then plus a noun. D'accord? So, quel plus un nom, okay? And when you want to replace this group, so what plus a noun, then you can have the lequel instead. Okay, remember that in that case, we'll see that a bit later in this lesson, but lequel, it will be for the singular masculine. Okay, then let's see how it goes for the feminine form, singular as well. So, it will be laquelle, okay, and then it will replace this quel, so what, but in that case, as you remember probably, we've got the feminine and the masculine form plus a noun, so plus un nom, okay? So if you want to replace quel plus un nom, then you will have to use laquelle. So this is the feminine form and this is a singular feminine form, okay? So let's see now the singular form and the plural form. So the first form that we'll see will be the masculine. So it will be, as we saw, lequel, okay? So remember, you get to pronounce it lequel. Even if you get this Q-U, okay, remember that this U phonetically doesn't exist, so lequel. Then for the plural form, you will add this S here and then S at the end, okay? And it will give you the pronunciation lequel, all right? So final S is not pronounced. So here, when you get this L-E-S, Okay, it's just like the article, if you remember, le, le, okay, so it goes like lequel, all right, and then the feminine form, so singular, we saw it, laquelle, okay, so basically same rule, q, u, u is not pronounced here, and then you get this e, double l, e, well, phonetically here, it is the same as what we have here, so laquelle, so the only difference between the feminine and the masculine form is this first part, okay? Laquelle, lequel. All right, phonetically, I mean, now of course, if you write them, uh, you get to put this double L uh, here. And then let's see for the plural form. So it will be quite logical in a way because we will have this plural form. So le, okay, as we had here, le, okay? And then quel. You just add this final S at the end, okay? And the good news is that phonetically, it's lequel here for the masculine form and then lequel for the feminine form, all right? So phonetically, it's exactly the same when we talk about the plural form here. But then if you want to write it correctly, remember that for the masculine, it will be a l s at the end here and then a l l a s at the end for the feminine. All right, so let's see a few examples. So the first one, il y a deux cafés. Okay, so if you want to translate directly, it would be, there are two coffees. Lequel veux-tu? So of course you could ask the same question and you could put this, quel café veux-tu? What? <laughs> let's put it, let's translate it straight. It would be more, more clear. Quel café veux-tu will be translated like what coffee do you want? Okay? In that case, okay, when you use this lequel, well, technically, you could translate it directly like which one? Okay? Which one do you want? Okay? So, il y a deux cafés, 
lequel, so in that case, just to avoid repeating quel café, okay, veux-tu, so remember, vouloir is to want, to you, okay, do you want, so lequel veux-tu, il y a deux cafés, lequel veux-tu, all right, or then it's possible as well, in that case, it's more let's say, spoken, okay, the first one is uh, the official one, because in that case you put lequel, and after that you change the order, remember, first the verb, then the subject, because that's the official and the formal way to ask a question, but then if you speak normally, it's possible to, well, put the order a bit differently, so il y a de café, so this doesn't change, of course, okay, tu veux lequel, all right, so you just keep the normal order, so you've got the subject here, you've got the verb here, and then you put lequel at the end, okay? Tu veux lequel, all right? Meaning is the same, but then it's better to use the second form orally and the first form. If you get to write, then use this first form, okay? So let's see another example. So, deux bus arrivent, okay? So, to Buses arrive. Lequel prenez-vous? Remember, prendre is to take. Huh? Vous, you. Okay, so it, you could be the, the, the plural form, or then it could be the polite form for you. Okay, so lequel prenez-vous? Which one do you take? All right. Or then, it could be as well as we saw in the previous example. You just keep the normal order, so subject, verb. Vous prenez lequel? All right, and then another example. Voici les pâtisseries. Laquelle choisissez-vous? Okay, choisir to choose. Voici les pâtisseries. Laquelle choisissez-vous? All right, same thing here. Voici les pâtisseries. Vous choisissez laquelle? All right, so you can see that in that case, it's the same. We just keep the normal order, so subject, verb, and then laquelle. All right? So now you've got lequel, lequel, and laquelle. Remember, phonetically, well, basically this second part, quel, doesn't change if you want to pronounce it, okay? Les professions, so many, many words. I hope you're ready because it will be quite useful and maybe a bit long. <laughs> Let's try to see that together. Okay, so we'll start right now. Un menuisier. Un électricien. Un plombier. Un maçon. Un agent immobilier. Un opticien. Okay, so let's see them one more time. Un menuisier. Remember this ui. Ui, ui. Menuisier. Alright. Then, un électricien. So you can see that we make the liaison here. Un électricien. i e n y -E n Électricien. Alright. Then, un plombier. Remember, O-M goes like O-N. So it's on, on. Plombier. All right. Un maçon. Here you can see that we've got this little cédille beneath the C, okay? And it just means that you will pronounce this C as S, okay? So that's the reason why. It's un maçon. Son, okay? O-N in your nose nasal, un maçon. All right? Then, liaison here. Un agent immobilier. Same thing here. Un opticien. Okay? Next page. Un dentiste. Un docteur. Un jardinier. Un agent d'entretien. Un mécanicien. Un boucher. All right, so let's see them one more time. Un dentiste. Remember, nasal, dent. Dentiste. Un docteur. E -u -r -e -r, E-U-R-E-R. Un docteur. Un jardinier. Remember, i e r i e, -e. Jardinier. 
Un agent d'entretien. Liaison here. Un agent d'entretien. Un mécanicien. Remember, I-E-N, yen. Like here, yen, yen. Un boucher. C-H, ch-ch-ch. Un boucher, boucher. So I tend to insist a little bit, but then it goes like un boucher. OK? Next page. Un coiffeur. Un bijoutier. Un pharmacien. Un infirmier. Un vétérinaire. Un fermier. OK, so let's see them now. Un coiffeur. Remember, O-E goes like wa 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 Quoi. And then E-U-R, heure. Un coiffeur. Then we get un bijoutier. Un pharmacien. So remember, P, H. So this combination of these two letters will produce the F sound. Fa, fa. Pharmacien. OK? Un pharmacien. OK, then, liaison here. Un infirmier. Un infirmier. I-E-R at the end. Yé, yé. Infirmier. OK? Then, un vétérinaire. Remember, accent aigu, accent aigu will give you this E sound. V, T, R, and then here it's open. R. Un vétérinaire. And then, un fermier. OK? Let's see the next page. Un pêcheur. Un marin. Un policier. Un militaire. Un gardien. Un pompier. All right, so let's see them. Un pêcheur. So remember when you get this accent circonflex, you know that's the name of this accent. On the top of E, it will open the sound. So you get E. E, really open. Okay, so pêcheur. Pêcheur. And then E-U-R, E-R. Okay, un pêcheur. All right, then un marin. I-N nasal, un, ok? Un marin, alright? Then, un policier, I-E-R, I-E, un policier, alright? Then, un militaire, remember, A-I, it's this E sound as well, E, militaire, alright? Then, un gardien, I-E-N here, I-E-N, un gardien, alright? Then, un pompier. So remember I was a <laughs> what I told you when you get this O M here it will give you the sound O so exactly the same sound as this O N all right so in your nose pom pom pompier all right next page now un avocat un comptable un architecte un scientifique un instituteur, un bibliothécaire. All right, so let's see them. Un avocat, so remember, liaison here, and then final T not pronounced, okay? Un avocat, un comptable. So, OM, remember, it goes like O, all right? And then, strangely, this P is not pronounced. Un comptable, all right? Then, un architecte. Same thing here, liaison, okay, un, a, un architecte, all right, and then ch, 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 architecte, all right, then un scientifique, un instituteur, okay, so liaison here, and then remember this e, u, it goes like er, er, with the er, instituteur. Then, un bibliothécaire. Bibliothé. Remember, in French, the H doesn't exist, so you don't pronounce it. Bibliothécaire. Un bibliothécaire. All right, so let's see the others. Un réceptionniste. Un facteur. Un conducteur. Un camionneur. Un chauffeur de taxi. Un pilote. Ok, so let's see them. Un réceptionniste. 
Okay, remember when you get this T E O N, so normally it will give you this S. I mean, I'm talking about the T here, okay? So, sionist, okay? Receptionist, all right? Then, un facteur, E U R E, un facteur. Then, un conducteur, O N, un conducteur. Un camionneur. Camionneur. Un chauffeur de taxi. Ok? A U O, then E U R E. Chauffeur. Un chauffeur de taxi. Un pilote. Ok, this one is quite easy. Un chef. Un musicien. Un danseur. Un comédien. Un chanteur, un serveur, ok, so let's see them, un chef, so remember, ch, it will give you the ch, -ch sound, un chef, ok, then, un musicien, un musicien, un danseur, remember, nasal here, a, n, o, un danseur, un comédien, i, e, n, i, n, Comédien. E, accent aigu here, gives you the E sound. Comédien. Alright? Then, un chanteur, un serveur, un barman. Well, this one is not that difficult. Un sculpteur, un sportif, un peintre. Un photographe, un journaliste, all right, so, un barman, un sculpteur, same thing here, this P here is not pronounced, so, sculpteur, un sculpteur, un sportif, un peintre, so remember when you get this E, I, N together here, then you pronounce this un sound, so nasal in your nose, un peintre, all right, and remember, final e uh here is not pronounced, it only gives you the pro possibility to pronounce these two letters, so tr, tr, okay, un peintre, all right, un photographe, so here, ph, and here, ph, pronounce it like f, 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 photographe, Okay, same thing here, this E, uh, you don't insist on it, you only pronounce this F at the end. Un photographe, okay? Un journaliste, same thing here, you know, final E uh, only gives you the T. Journaliste, okay? Un barman, again? Oh no, un sculpteur, so I've been putting two times the same page. Well, let's repeat it. Un sportif, un peintre, un photographe, un journaliste. Ok, so let's see the last page. Un rédacteur, un dessinateur, un couturier. Ok, so, un rédacteur, alright, remember, un accent aigu here, so you will have this E sound, rédac. And then this heure, okay? Un dessinateur. And then un couturier. Remember, O, U goes like O, okay? Couturier. I, E, R, I, E, I, E, okay? Un, courtu un couturier. This lesson, I, I thought it might be useful for you to have some vocabulary regarding cuisiner, so cuisiner is to cook, just because French people like to talk about food, they like to talk about uh, cooking and all these things, so it's usually quite useful to have few words or few verbs to, to be able to discuss about that, okay? And especially at this level, unité set, I think it might be the time. So let's start now. Éplucher. Battre. Faire mijoter, pocher, griller. Ok, so let's see them one more time. Éplucher, 
Okay, remember when we've got this CH, the sound is SH, okay? Épluché, all right? First group of verbs, okay, ending with ER, so basically it is quite easy to conjugate, okay? Then, battre, battre, okay? Even if you get deux T here, two letters, well, basically you've got only the sound of one, okay? Battre, okay? Third group of verbs, a bit tricky to conjugate, but still, it's possible at your level. Then, faire mijoter, okay? Faire mijoter. Then, pocher, okay, first group, griller, okay, it's interesting because here you get this E and then double L, okay, in most of the cases, and I don't say always because it's not possible in French to say always, we've got so many exceptions, but in most of the cases, you will pronounce it Y, Y, okay, griller, that's the reason why, griller, okay, remember, uh, R, because these are verbs here, Griller, pocher, éplucher, okay, you pronounce them E, okay, even if you get this R, okay, this combination of two letters, a R at the end will give you the sound E, all right, so griller, okay, let's see the others. Rotir, cuire au four, bouillir, frire, couper. All right, so, rotir, don't forget this accent circonflex, sorry, then, cuire au four, bouillir, so that's maybe the, the tricky one of the list here, so, bou, and then, yir, okay, bouillir, so, bou, yir, bouillir, okay, frire, and then coupé. Well, coupé is quite easy. First group here, so je coupe, tu coupes, il coupe. Nous coupons, vous coupez, il coupe. So quite easy to conjugate. Coupé en tranche. Râpé. Étalé au rouleau. Remuer. Mélanger. Okay, so let's see them. So here you get this coupé again, okay? En tranche. So tranche is a slice, okay? So in that case, coupé en tranche. Rappé. So don't forget this accent. Circonflex here. First group of verb, easy to conjugate. Étalé au rouleau. Okay? Étalé. So first group of verbs are quite easy to make. Then remuer. So this, maybe it's the difficult one of the list. Remu, mu, 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 okay. Remuer, remuer. And then mélanger. Okay, remember, G, E, goes like J, J, okay. Mélanger, mélanger. All right. Les plats d'un repas. So, it will be a short lesson, but still, in the previous lesson, we saw that um, all the verbs, uh, well, the main verbs that we can use in French to uh, discuss about uh, cooking and how to prepare uh, a dish. And now, we'll see les plats d'un repas. Okay? So, un apéritif, une entrée, Un plat principal, un fromage, okay, so let's see that, un apéritif, so here you get the liaison between the two, un apéritif, okay, and then you get the A accent aigu, so it goes like E, un apéritif, then une entrée, une entrée, okay, remember, well, technically this final E uh, here is not pronounced, so phonetically it doesn't exist, so it's E, okay? Entrée. Remember, nasal here? En, entrée. Une entrée. Then, un plat principal. Final T here, not pronounced. Un plat principal. I-N, remember, it's nasal, it goes in your nose. Un, un, principal. Un plat principal. All right? Then, un fromage. Okay, remember, G-E, J, J. Okay, in that case, you don't insist on the final uh, j. Fromage. 
un fromage. Right. Then, une salade. Un dessert. Un café. All right, so, une salade. Same thing here. Final, e. Uh, you don't insist on it. It only gives you the pronunciation of the previous letter. So, d. Salade. Salade. Okay? Une salade. Un dessert. Okay? So, remember that we've got here two s. Okay? That's the reason why you pronounce it s. And then it opens the e. Uh, dessert. Un dessert. So, you don't say un dessert. Okay? But you say un dessert. Final T, not pronounced. Un dessert. All right? Un café. Okay, remember, accent aigu here. Un café. Un café. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. And this is Unité 7, Leçon P. And in this lesson, we'll discover together le conditionnel Passé. So, maybe some of you might think that it's a bit early to introduce this conditionnel passé form because normally it comes a bit later. But still, I think that we've been introduced this conditionnel présent form in this unit. So, it's still warm and I still have the feeling and I have the feeling that normally it should be okay for avoir and être. So, at the conditionnel présent, that's the reason why I think it might be useful to introduce this conditionnel passé form, especially because it's not that difficult if you master the conditionnel présent form and then the passé composé, I mean by that, these participe passé forms, okay? So we'll see how it goes. And then the first thing that we'll see in this lesson is l'utilisation, okay? So when do we use this conditionnel passé form? And the second thing that we'll work on is la formation, so the way we make it or we build it, okay? So let's start with the first one, so utilisation, okay? And then the first use that we will have for this conditionnel passé, it's to express regrets, exprimer les regrets, exprimer des regrets, okay? So that's the first, well, one of the first use, let's say. The second one would be une information non confirmée. So if you're looking at the news, for instance, and then they want to talk about something that happened, but then they don't have all the uh, elements to con confirm this information. So normally in that case, they just use this conditionnel passé form, okay? And then something, I mean, the last one would be imaginer des situations irréelles dans le Passé. So you want to imagine some situations that, well, technically are not real and they take place in the past. So that's the use of le conditionnel passé. Okay? So first one, exprimer des regrets here. Second use, information non confirmée. And then the last one, imaginer des situations irréelles dans le passé. Okay? And now let's see how we make this conditionnel passé. All right. So, first example I wanted to put is je mangerai au restaurant. Okay. So this sentence, if you remember, we saw that in uh, well these units anyway when we introduced this conditionnel présent form. Okay. So you get the verb. The verb is manger. Je mangerai au restaurant. And then if you look at the conditionnel passé, well it will go like j'aurai manger au restaurant. Okay? Second example, tu regarderais la télévision. Tu aurais regardé la télévision. Okay? So same thing here, the first one is at the conditionnel présent form, second one conditionnel passé form. And then il irait au travail would become il serait allé au travail. All right. So if you look carefully, then what you can see, I mean, you can see first that it is composed. So you've got two parts. The first one here is avoir. Then you've got what we called and what we saw previously for the passé composé form. This is participe passé. Okay, past participle. Here the same way. Have a look. It's avoir and then it's the past participle, regardez. And here, we've got être, 
and here we've got the past participle. So, maybe if you want to construct this conditional passive form, you will have first to use avoir, like we saw, but then avoir should be at the conditional present form. Okay? Then you will put after this participle passive form that we saw previously when we introduced the passé composé because that's the second part that we use for the passé composé as well. All right, so first, avoir at the conditional present form plus participle passé, past participle, then you will get your conditional passé form. Okay? But we saw as well that in some cases, we'll use être, but then same thing, it should be at the conditional present form. Whoops! <laughs> Plus participe passé, so it doesn't change, and it will give you conditionnel passé. Okay, so you get to remember that in most of the cases, in most of the cases, you will use avoir. Okay? So if you're not sure, if you've got a doubt, then put avoir, okay? If you know that it should be constructed with être, then put être, of course, okay? In both cases, remember, that should be, they should be at the conditionnel present form, all right? So we'll see. So the verbs that will require être will be the following. Aller, to go. Arriver, to arrive. Descendre, to go down. Devenir, to become. Entrer, to enter. To come in, to go in. Monter, to go up. Mourir, to die. Naître, born. Partir, to leave. Rester, to stay. Retourner, to return. Sortir, to go out. Tomber, to fall. Venir, to come. Okay, so all these verbs will require être for this conditional passé form. And then if you remember what we've been seeing for the passé composé, uh, well, they are exactly the same verbs that will requ require être, whether for the passé composé or then for the conditional passé. And the good news is that we've got other composed tenses in French, and this list will be always the same. So it means that this list of verbs that will require être will be the same for all these composed tenses, okay? So remember, one more time, aller, arriver, descendre, devenir, entrer, monter, mourir, naître, partir, rester, retourner, sortir, tomber, venir. Okay, so remember, you will have to use être with these verbs. Okay, so as I said, être, but then for the conditionnel passé, être should be conjugated at the conditionnel présent. All right, so let's see that. But then the other uh, group of verbs that will require all the time être will be what we call les verbes réfléchis, so reflexive verbs, okay, and they usually goes like se regarder, okay, se regarder, s'appeler, se présenter, so they will use être for this conditionnel passé form, but then, well, it, I mean, they are the, exactly the same verbs, you know, as we saw for this part, uh, passé composé, so it is always the same rule. Okay, so se regarder, s'appeler, se présenter. So all the reflexive verbs will require être at the conditionnel passé. Okay, so let's see now how avoir and être, how they go at the conditionnel présent because that's the first part that you will have to put. So it's j'aurais, tu aurais, il aurait. Elle aurait, nous aurions, vous auriez, ils auraient, elles auraient. Okay, so that's what you will use in most of the cases. 
Okay, so let's see that. Let, let's see it one more time. J'aurais, remember, final S not pronounced. Tu aurais, same thing here, final S not pronounced. Il aurait, elle aurait, final T not pronounced. Nous aurions, liaison here, this little link. Nous aurions, final S not pronounced. Vous auriez, liaison here, and then a Z will go like A. Vous auriez, okay, and the last one. Ils auraient, so liaison here. Elles auraient. And then look, if you've got A, E, E, N, T, then phonetically it goes like aurait. Okay, so phonetically you've got aurait here, aurait, aurait, and here as well, aurait. Okay, so it's quite easy to produce orally. And then être, je serais, tu serais, il serait, elle serait, nous serions, vous seriez, il serait, elle serait. Okay, so we'll see that one more time. Je serais, same thing here, final S not pronounced. Tu serais, final S not pronounced. Il serait, final T not pronounced. Elle serait. Nous serions, final S not pronounced. Vous seriez. So here when you get a, well, when you get this a Z at the end, then you get the sound E. Seriez. So vous seriez. Okay, and the last one. Il serait, R-E-E-N-T here, phonetically it goes like E, okay? Serait, elle serait. So same thing here, we've got serait here, phonetically I mean. Serait, serait, and serait. So the same sound. Okay, and then for the second part that we use, so what we call le participe passé. So... The thing is that for the first group of verbs, so normally the first group of verbs, we talk about the verbs ending at the infinitive form with a er. Okay? So these verbs are quite easy because if you've got, well, have a look at the, the, the first example that I put, and it's parler, parler to speak, to talk. So you can see that it ends with a er here. It's here. Okay? So this is the infinitive form, so the basic form of the verb. Okay, and then the participe passé, so this past participle, will be like that, a accent aigu, so parler, all right? Then the verb regarder, a R here, will follow the same rule, regarder, like that, with the accent, accent aigu. And here, when we talk about the first group of verbs, we are really talking about a lot of verbs, okay? So, many, many verbs will follow this simple rule, okay? So, the second part that you will use for this conditionnel passé will be written like that if the verb is belonging to the first group of verbs. Even the verb... Aller. Aller to go, remember, it's a tricky verb normally when you conjugate it, especially at the present form. But for this past participle form, it is quite easy because it goes like a l l e accent aigu. So it does follow the same rule. This e r become e like that. Okay? Second group of verb. So regular verbs, not all the e r verbs. Okay? Quite easy as well. Let's take choisir. Choisir is to choose. Okay? ER, like that, and it will become E. Finir, to finish or to end. ER, and it will become E. Unir, to unite. ER, and it will become E. So it's quite easy. Okay? Choisir, choisi. Finir, fini. Unir, uni. So, of course... We've got exceptions because we're talking about the third group of verbs. And then this one is, well, it, it's tricky. I mean, we've got to be honest with that. The first advice I would give you is to try to remember them by heart, okay? And I've been making um, a video about these uh, tricky uh, participe passé, okay? But then here we can have a look at them. So subgroups here. Talking about the one ending with U, okay? So, for example, connaître, to know, will become connu, 
ok? Voir, to see, will become vu, ok? Ending with e, partir, will become parti. Partir is to leave. Rire, to laugh, will become ri, ok? The one ending with it, like here. Écrire, to write, écrit. Dire, to say, dire. Uh, sorry, D. <laughs> Getting time. And then ES. Mettre will become me. Mettre means to put. Prendre, to take, will become pri. Okay? So here you get the past participle. So the, the, the participe passé of these verbs here. Okay? So we'll take one example. The example will be parler. Parler is to talk. Or to speak, okay? So, we will have at the conditionnel passé form, if you remember. So, first part here is avoir, at the conditionnel présent. Then here, we've got the participe passé of parler. And it will give you, j'aurais parlé. Tu aurais parlé? Il aurait parlé? Elle aurait parlé? Nous aurions parlé, vous auriez parlé, ils auraient parlé, elles auraient parlé. Okay? So I wanted to put this E like that in another color just to tell you that if you've got a normal structure like that, so you've got the subject and then you've got the verb, Okay, nothing in between, so subject, verb. Then if you use avoir, exactly the same rule as we saw for the passé composé. So if you use avoir here, you won't have to modify your participe passé. So it will change, it, will, it won't change, sorry. It will stay like a accent aigu, okay? Even if it's the singular, the plural, or then the feminine. Okay, it doesn't change, so it will stay like parler. All right. But if you use être, like here, il serait allé. Okay, so remember, allé was belonging to this group of verbs that require être. Okay, to construct this conditionnel passé. All right. Il serait allé. So in that case, you can see that at the end, it's allé like that without anything after. But then, if we look at the feminine form, elle serait allé, you will have to add this e at the end. Okay? Remember, e, in most of the cases, when you have to add something, it's the mark of the feminine. Okay, so, elle serait allée, okay? But then, phonetically, it doesn't exist, all right? So, it's aller here, and then aller here, the way you pronounce it. But if you want to write correctly, you should put it. And then, the same thing for the plural. We will have to put the plural, and then the mark of the plural, the thing that we've got to add at the end, will be S. The good news, as well, you don't pronounce it, as usual in French. You write it, you don't pronounce it. Okay, so it doesn't change. It's aller here, aller, and then aller. Okay, phonetically, the same thing, but remember, it's just a question of, well, being correct if you want to write it. Okay, and then, logically, feminine plural, then you should add a mark of the feminine, as we had previously, and S, mark of the plural. And guess what? You don't pronounce it. Okay? So, phonetically, it's aller, 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 and aller. Alright? But you need to write them. Okay? So, let's see now the full thing. So, je serai allé. Okay? And then if you want to make the liaison, it would be more beautiful. Je serai allé. Tu serais allé. Il serait allé, elle serait allé. Nous serions allés. Vous seriez allé. Il serait allé, elle serait allé. All right, so that's it. And then one example with this 
reflexive verbs that we saw and then well i just wanted to use this se présenter okay so je me serais présenté tu te serais présenté il se serait présenté elle se serait présenté nous nous serions présentés vous vous seriez présenté il se serait présenté elle se serait présentée All right, so if it's not really clear yet for these uh, reflexive verbs, I mean, the way you should conjugate them, I definitely advise you to check the, the, the lesson uh, regarding these uh, reflexive verbs because uh, I've been making one video regarding that, so it would, be, it would be easier for you to understand the way we construct it, especially in that case, why we put this je me tuteur, etc. Okay? All right, so remember the last thing that you should remember before ending this lesson is that when you construct this conditional passé, so in most of the cases, you will have to use avoir at the conditional present form, then the participle passé, and it will give you conditional passé, okay? In some exceptions, so we saw the list of verbs, you should really try to remember them by heart. I know it's not easy, but, you know, try your best. And then the, the reflexive verbs, okay? So for these Exceptions, we will use être at the conditional present form, then the participle passé, and it will give you this conditional passé form. Okay. I hope it was clear. Uh, YouTube.com slash Imagier, that's the place where you can find all the videos, and then the website is here, Imagier.net. Have a great day. Bye bye. Beauté et hygiène. So let's start now. La beauté. Une brosse, un démaquillant, un peigne, un poudrier. Okay, so let's see them one more time. La beauté. Remember, we've got this combination of E, A, U here, of the, the vowels, okay? But then it will give you the sound O, beauté, okay? La beauté, all right? Then, une brosse. Remember, don't insist on this final uh, brosse. Un démaquillant. So we've got this Q, U, but then U is not pronounced. So you get the sound qui. Okay. And then remember, double L after E will give you the sound y, y, y. Démaquillant. Final T not pronounced. Démaquillant. Okay. And this is nasal in your nose. Oh. Démaquillant. Then, un peigne. Final E, you don't insist on it. It's ny, ny, the last sound. And then this E, E combination will give you this E, open E. Un peigne. All right? Un poudrier. Okay, remember, O, U, U. Pou, poudrier. All right? Un bigoudi. Un fer à friser. Un gant de toilette. Un gel. Un sèche-cheveux. Okay, so let's see them. Un bigoudi. It's quite funny to pronounce, isn't it? Bigoudi. Okay, but not difficult. Un fer à friser. Un gant de toilette. Remember, G-A goes like ga. Okay, g -g -g. but in that case, you've got this A-N, so it's nasal, gant, and then final T is not pronounced here. Un gant, gant, de toilette. Un gel, un sèche, so this one is a bit tricky. So remember, we've got this E accent grave here, so it's really open. E, sèche, okay, sèche, and then cheveux. Usually, this one is a bit of a problem because some of the students normally pronounce it chevaux, okay? So try to keep in mind that you get e, u here, so it goes like e, e, okay? And then final x not pronounced, sorry, final x, <laughs> should pronounce it the French way. Final x is not pronounced, so you get che, and then you get v, okay? Cheveux, okay? And the full thing... Un sèche-cheveux. All right. 
Une laque. Une hygiène. Un crayon à lèvres. Un rouge à lèvres. Un maquillage. All right, so let's see them. Une laque. Remember the rule when you get this Q, U? Well, U is not pronounced, so you get K, K, like that. Une laque. Une hygiène. So remember, we've got this Y here, vowel, and it's pronounced like E, 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 okay? Hygiène. H doesn't exist, H doesn't exist in French, so hygiène. Un crayon à lèvres. Final S not pronounced. Lèvres, okay? And then when you get this Y between two vowels, z, <laughs> then you will have this Cré, so like if you would have E here, A, E, Cré, and then another E here, Lyon. Cré, Lyon. Un crayon à lèvres. Un rouge à lèvres. Same thing here, final S not pronounced, and then this E accent grave here, it gives you the E, really open sound. Lèvres. Alright. Un maquillage. Okay, so here, same, same rule. Q, U, but then U is not pronounced, so qui, and then Y, Y, maquillage. Une crème hydratante. Un coupe-ongle. Un vernis à ongles. Un parfum. Un shampoing. Okay, so let's cover them together. Une crème hydratante. So remember, H is not existing, and then this Y is pronounced like I. Hydratante. Okay, don't insist on the final E, and this is nasal. Hydratante. Un coupe-ongle. Okay, O-N, remember, nasal, on, ongle. Un coupe-ongle. Un vernis à ongles. Final S here not pronounced. Same thing here. Vernis à ongles. Un parfum. So remember, even if you get this U-M like that, phonetically it's exactly the same thing as if you would have U-N. So it's nasal and it's un. So it really goes in your nose. You don't pronounce the M at all. Un. Okay? So par... Fin. Parfum. Okay? Un parfum. And then, un shampoing. Okay, this is a strange one, <laughs> really. Try to listen to me and repeat, so maybe you shouldn't visualize the, the, the word, but still, it goes like shampoing. Okay? Shampoing. One more time. Shampoing. Okay, the, the full thing. Shampoing. Bonjour à tous, and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 7, Leçon R. And I've been thinking that I could make maybe two videos, so it would be the first one regarding the verbs, okay? Uh, so just to give you quite many verbs, because at this level, at this stage, normally you should definitely try to learn as much or as many verbs as possible, and then vocabulary is the same, okay? So we'll start right now. Avoir, posséder. Okay, so for each verb, okay, I will first put the direct translation of the verb and then maybe, you know, one or two other verbs, okay? So it's uh, really important to just keep in mind that the first one is the direct translation, okay? So the first one that you should use in almost all the contexts, okay? But in some cases, it's possible to use the other options depending on the context or the situation, okay? But then, so, avoir, posséder. Être, aller, s'en aller. Obtenir, recevoir, avoir. Pouvoir. Okay, one more time. Avoir, posséder. 
être, aller, s'en aller, obtenir, recevoir, avoir, pouvoir. Voir, regarder, venir, faire, fabriquer, savoir, connaître, prendre, saisir. So let's repeat them one more time. Voir, regarder, venir, faire, fabriquer, savoir, connaître. So for these two verbs, I've been making one video, okay, that you can find if you use the search engine in uh, YouTube, okay? Because, well, really they mean exactly the same thing, okay? But it's just a construction that you will have to uh, modify if you use savoir and then connaître, okay? Prendre, saisir. Penser, réfléchir, mettre, placer, vouloir, avoir envie de, désirer, dire, raconter, dire, déclarer. Ok? Penser, Réfléchir, mettre, placer, vouloir, avoir envie de, désirer, dire, raconter, dire, déclarer, donner, offrir, aimer bien. Aimer, apprécier, regarder, travailler, écrire, donner, offrir. Aimer bien, aimer, apprécier, regarder, travailler, écrire. Trouver, retrouver, jouer, falloir, devoir, utiliser, courir, se précipiter, trouver, retrouver, jouer, falloir, devoir, utiliser, Courir, se précipiter, apporter, amener, montrer, exposer, présenter, garder, retenir, conserver, aider, assister, épauler. Placer, poster, mettre, apporter, amener, montrer, exposer, présenter, garder, retenir, conserver, aider, assister, épauler. Placer, poster, mettre. So that's it for the first part of the verbs. Okay, so the next lesson will be exactly the same thing. Um, I mean the same thing, no, but the same concepts, but other verbs. Okay, so the video can be found here. Okay, and then the all the others as well. And the website is here. Okay, have a great
Live verb, okay? So it will be the second part of the uh, the list of the verbs that I wanted to, to, to give you before the end of this unité set, okay? And so, let's start. Essayer, tenter, okay? So just to repeat, if you didn't check that, uh, well, if you didn't see that the first video, so I will put each time the first verb here, uh, it will be the direct translation of this verb okay so it will apply uh well it will be the same meaning in almost all the contexts okay and then the second or third or maybe fourth option uh it will be a translation that would be possible in some situations okay but not all okay but still essayer tenter demander interroger lire Appeler. Partir. Essayer. Tenter. Demander. Interroger. Lire. Appeler. Partir. Entendre. Ouir. Démarrer. Commencer. Entamer. Espérer. Souhaiter. Tourner. Retourner. Avoir besoin de. Nécessité. Entendre. Ouir. Démarrer. Commencer. Entamer. Espérer. Souhaiter. Tourner, retourner, avoir besoin de, nécessité. Se sentir, croire que, ouvrir, arrêter, cesser, payer, régler, acheter. Se sentir, croire que, ouvrir, arrêter, cesser, payer, régler, acheter. Porter, transporter, marcher, se promener, rester, séjourner. Envoyer, expédier, rencontrer, retrouver, se réunir. Porter, transporter, marcher, se promener, rester, séjourner, envoyer, expédier, rencontrer, Retrouver, se réunir. Croire, souhaiter, désirer. Couper, tailler. Se souvenir, se rappeler. Tomber. Croire, souhaiter, désirer. Couper. Tailler, se souvenir, se rappeler, tomber. Manger, se restaurer, aimer, adorer, patienter, attendre, fermer, finir, terminer. Manger, se restaurer, aimer, adorer, patienter, attendre, fermer, finir, terminer. 